to see some of those things. Um, you know, and while those the proteins and, and fats and lipids and combinations of those things, those are made of all the molecules we were just talking about in the last section when we were talking about biochemistry. All the parts of a cell are made of those things, much of it protein. And so it's very complex. The way cells work um, is very complicated. We simplify it so we can understand it a little easier at our level. Um, but that's what's going on inside of a cell. And so let's just talk a little bit about um, kind of the history of cells. Scientists didn't really know about cells until like the 1600s. Can you guess why? Kaya? Yeah, what exactly? What piece of technology do they not have? Microscopes, right. Um, we didn't really know about cells. <clears throat> we couldn't see cells until scientists started to build microscopes. And we talked a little bit about some of these folks when we were talking about um, microscopes in our, our um, first unit of the year. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, this guy, uh, he was living in the 1600s to the 1700s. He made um, some microscopes that were able to magnify 200 times. He saw living cells. He looked at, under his microscope, blood um, or sperm cells or pond water. And when he looked under this, this microscope that he had built, he saw that these things are made of cells that were moving and living. Robert Hooke, another person, he um, developed the compound microscope or used the compound microscope. He came up with the word cell and he cataloged lots of different things. He made all these detailed drawings in a book called Micrographia that he published. And he was showing what he was seeing under his microscope. As time went on, as microscopes got better and better, um, what scientists can see improved. Robert Brown, he found that inside of a cell, there's a little area called the nucleus. Um, other scientists found cells in plants and animals and Together, they started to putting together their ideas into what we call the cell theory. So the cell theory is kind of the basic concept that um, scientists came up with after all of this sort of observation. Um, um, and the scientists that are kind of credited with putting this all together are Schwann, Schleiden, and Verkau around 1855. And the cell theory says three things. First, says that cells are the basic unit of structure and organization for all organisms. Every single thing that's alive is made up of cells. If you think about it this way, think about all the different Lego sets you can buy, right? From a huge Harry Potter, ca Potter castle to a Millennium Falcon to um, castles and um, buildings and things like that. They're all made of the same basic pieces, right? The same basic Lego pieces can be used to build all sorts of different things. That's kind of what this part of the cell theory says. There's all different types of cells, and you put them together, you can make larger, more complicated structures. All organisms, anything that is alive, is composed of one or more cells. <clears throat> the last part of the cell theory says, talks about where do cells come from? What's the answer to that question? Where do cells come from? Come from other cells. Cells can reproduce. One cell can reproduce forming another cell. All cells have a few things in common. 
right? They all have a membrane around them called the plasma membrane or the cell membrane that surrounds them. They're all filled with like a sort of fluid, like a jello-like fluid, where the organelles, the pieces inside are held. They all have these tiny structures that make proteins called ribosomes. And they have DNA, the genetic material. All cells have those things in common. But then there's some differences between different types of cells that we're going to be talking about. All right, I have another short video I want to show you. All right, so there you see just a little more about um, cell theory. So when we talk about cells, this is something we already mentioned back when we were talking about the different kingdoms and domains. There's sort of two big groups of cells, what we call prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And they have some important differences. The prokaryotic cells are the simplest. They're the oldest. They were the first living things were prokaryotes. So basically they're, they're single celled and they're just um, a cell that has the genetic material, the DNA, it's just kind of spread throughout the cytoplasm. It's not in a nucleus. So that's why we say prokaryotes have no nucleus. They don't have any other organelles that are membranes around them. They're really small. These are bacteria okay, um, and archaea. Then the other type of cell are the eukaryotes. These are more complex cells. They have a nucleus in them surrounded by a membrane. They have other organelles that have membranes, like a... Um, ER and mitochondria and chloroplasts, they're larger, they're more complex. Eukaryotic cells include animal cells, plant cells, fungi, protists. Those are all eukaryotic cells. And so if we think about a living thing, a complex living thing, like a person, we could sort of think about how our bodies are organized at different scales, at different levels. You look at sort of the basic level, we're made of trillions of cells. That's the simplest layer of organization. But if we look closely, many cells can work together to do a certain job. And they form what we call tissues in our body. So if we look in this, this diagram, this is a single cell, a muscle cell, but a whole bunch of muscle cells can work together and they form what we call muscle tissue. And then several types of tissue can work together to do a job and that forms what we call an organ, like our heart or lungs or stomach. And in this diagram, here we have the stomach. The stomach is made of smooth muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, and so forth. So it's made of several tissues working together to do a job, hold and digest food. Several organs can get put together to make a bigger system. We call it an organ system, like our digestive system. Our digestive system is made of several organs, the esophagus, the mouth, Stomach, small intestine, large intestine. They're all kind of working together to do one common job. Digest and allow us to absorb nutrients. And then put all those together and we can end up with an entire living organism, like a human. So we call these the levels of organization, from simplest, a cell, to most complex. We also often we'll compare plant cells and animal cells because there's some differences. They're both eukaryotic cells, but the plant cell has several structures that typically you don't find in animal cells. One is the cell wall. Plant cells a lot around the outside, outside of their cell membrane have like a rigid cell wall made of cellulose. It's kind of almost like a shell around each cell. 
Also, plant cells have chloroplasts in them, so they can go through the process of photosynthesis. Plant cells have a big vacuole in the middle, typically, that's filled with water that helps give them their shape. Those are the three most important differences. So here we look at a couple diagrams. This shows kind of a general, generic animal cell and plant cell. One on the bottom is a plant cell. You could see it has this thick cell wall around it. It has a large vacuole in it filled with water. It has these chloroplasts. Those are some um, signals that this is a plant cell and this is an animal cell. Animal cell doesn't have a cell wall. It has a, only the cell membrane as it's called in most plants. We're going to talk about a bunch of these organelles and what they do, what they look like, what their job is. Start from the outside, kind of. So the outer layer of all, or the layer that all cells have is the cell membrane. Cell membrane is sort of the boundary between the cell and the outside. It's found in all cells, whether they're prokaryotes or eukaryotes animal cell, plant cell, they all have this cell membrane. Sometimes it's called the plasma membrane. It's really complex. It's made of two layers. It's called the phospholipid bilayer. And it has all sorts of things attached on the outside, things that go through it on the inside. Um, one of those is a receptor molecules, which are really important for cells communicating with each other. Here's an actual microscope image, and it's just the outer layer here. That's the cell membrane. Here's a more complicated picture. So this is the outside of the cell is in blue. The sort of, I don't know what color this is, brown color is the inside of the cell. And so this is the separation. That's the cell membrane that separates the two. And what you can see here is there's a bunch of proteins stuck inside of there. Some of them go all the way through. Some of them are only stuck on the bottom. Some are only on the top. There's other things that are attached to the cell membrane. So it's very complex. And these different parts of the cell membrane do different things. And some of those things that happen is first, sometimes things need to go through the cell membrane. And so transport is important. Some molecules can move through these proteins. It's like a little tunnel through the cell membrane. Some of these proteins are enzymes. Some allow messages to be sent from one cell to another. These are the receptor molecules are really important. This is how hormones work. Hormones bind to a receptor molecule and cause the cell to do something. So there's many jobs of these different proteins. And here's an example of that communication. Here we have a hormone attaches to a receptor protein that's in the cell membrane, and that causes some stuff to happen inside the cell. Filling up the cell is the cytoplasm kind of like a fluid, it's mostly water. Kind of holds the other things in place, allows substances to diffuse in and out. It's kind of the filling of the cell. And you can see in this little video, you can see the cytoplasm is moving. These, This is a plant cell. These little green things are chloroplasts. And you can see they're moving, they're kind of floating in that cytoplasm. We can look in a cell and see a nucleus if it's a if it's a eukaryotic cell. Nucleus is where the DNA is stored, the genetic material, the chromosomes. That's all held in eukaryotes in the nucleus. The nucleus has a membrane around it. 
and it kind of keeps the DNA inside of it, sort of protects it. That's where our chromosomes are. That's, they're made of DNA. And the, the nucleus has some holes in it. They're called pores that allow small molecules to move in and out of the nucleus. And that's going to be important when we talk about DNA and genetics and protein. Also inside of the nucleus is an area called the nucleolus. And this is where ribosomes are made. So if we look at this, we can see sort of this is the nucleus of a cell. The darker area inside is the nucleolus. Ribosomes are really important. All cells have ribosomes, even the simpler prokaryotic cells. To help you remember what they do, what I often tell students is remember the first three letters say ribs. Anyone like ribs, like eating ribs? What kind of nutrient do you think ribs are made out of? They're meat. What does meat have a lot of? Protein. Ribosomes' job is to make protein. So if you remember ribs have protein, that might help you remember what the ribosomes do. They make proteins, which as we've been talking about with enzymes and all these other parts of the cell are really important. Proteins are what makes up large portions of our cell. So these ribosomes, some of them are just kind of floating around in the cytoplasm. Others are attached to this membrane that's called the ER, which we'll talk about. ER, when you look at it, it looks like these series of like tubes. They're made of membrane. And the ER's job is to help make and transport materials from one part of the cell to another. It's a bunch of these sort of, it's like a maze, interconnected, Two. So in some parts of the ER, there's a bunch of these ribosomes that make protein. They're, that's called the rough ER. Some parts of the ER don't have those ribosomes. That's called the smooth ER. You can see it here again. It's usually close to the nucleus and it just kind of looks like a web of membranes. So see here. The Golgi bodies or Golgi apparatus takes these proteins that are made, kind of packages them up into little bubbles and sends them out of the cell. It prepares materials that are gonna leave the cell. Kind of looks like a, a stack of pancakes with like drops of syrup on it, these little bubbles. Those are bubbles filled with material that's gonna be leaving the cell. Can see here. Materials come in. Okay. Receive materials. They go through these membranes, get packaged up into these little bubbles, and sent out so they can leave the cell. Any cell that has to produce lots of material that's going to be excreted probably has a lot of these Golgi apparatus. Lysosomes are just little bubbles that contain digestive enzymes. These are important in cells that need to destroy um, viruses and, things, and bacteria. These are an important part of our immune system. When cell organelles are not working properly, lysosomes break them down. In the cell, they just like, like little, little circles, little bubbles. They help digest things. Okay. 
Vacuoles are storage areas. They're just areas where you know, water or other materials can be stored. They're surrounded by a membrane. And remember, in plant cells, there's usually a large vacuole filled with water that helps give the plant cell its shape. This is an important organelle that we're going to talk about in more detail at the end of this unit. This is the mitochondria. What do you remember about them? Yeah, it helps to produce energy for the cell. It's where a process called cellular respiration takes place. Cellular respiration. This is the process that gives our cells usable energy. They have a pretty complex shape. They're made of two double layers. They got all these folds inside of them where these chemical reactions can take place. Some cells have many of them. Cells that need lots of energy, like muscle cells that do a lot of movement, they have lots of mitochondria. In fact, as you exercise and develop greater endurance, it's because one of the reasons because your cells that you're using repeatedly are, are producing more mitochondria to give your um, give those muscle tissues more energy. They look like a bean with a bunch of folds inside of them, like a jelly bean. Chloroplasts are found in some cells, not all. And this is where photosynthesis happens. So in the cells of a leaf, there's many chloroplasts. They help capture sunlight and use that energy to make food for the plant. They're typically green because they have a pigment called chlorophyll in them that gives them their green color. Chlorophyll is the molecule that can help absorb sunlight. You'll see in this diagram in the lower left, those little green circles, those are chloroplasts that are found in this leaf cell. This cell also has these structures like you see here, and you saw them in the video of um, crisscrossing the cell. That's called the cytoskeleton. It's kind of like um, some proteins that um, give the cell its shape and structure, provides like a pathway for things to move around. This thing you saw in the video, it's kind of neat. That's called a motor protein. It actually takes and attaches to these vesicles and kind of walks them down this um, part of the cytoskeleton to move them from one place to another. Some types of cells have a cell wall. It's usually a hard kind of rigid shell around the outside of the cell. It's outside of the cell membrane. And usually it's non-living. It's just kind of a, a shell. It helps give certain cells their shape, helps protect them. And in different types of organisms, it's made of different types of, of uh, proteins. So in this, this microscope image, you can see this whitish layer. That's the cell wall, this thick cell wall around these plant cells. So that's a lot of information about some of these organelles. And I've, you know, simplified some things and not talked about all the detail on your side. What really you should know is sort of what is the function? What is the job of the important cell organelles? So you don't have to worry about lots of the details about them, but you really should know, like, what do these different things do? Why are they present in cell?